This is a two-minute audio introduction to a film called How Are Life Masks Made? It's from the National Portrait Gallery. The film lasts about four minutes and offers the chance to watch artist Nick Reynolds creating a life mask. Nick is a white man in his 60s with shaggy, long white hair that's tied back from a lean face and he wears John Lennon-style spectacles with small round lenses tinted orange. Nick dresses casually in a washed-out denim shirt over a black t-shirt. He wears two chunky silver rings. He's filmed in an empty bar, working with a model, a clean-shaven man in his early thirties who is bald and wearing a v-neck grey t-shirt. The model sits on a stool as Nick applies the silicon moulding compound, a greenish gloop, to the man's face using a paintbrush that's about an inch wide. He coats the model's face completely with a thin layer, roughly at first, and later smoothed with the brush before covering it with strips of plaster of Paris bandage, which is about four inches wide. He leaves small gaps beneath the nostrils and adds narrow strips across the eye holes. Removing the completed mold, he pours in plaster and swills it around before gently shaking the mold to release the silicon layer from the cast, peeling it off to reveal the plaster replica beneath. Finally, he and the model stand side by side, smiling, with Nick holding up the finished life mask so the model and mask can be compared. Still photos are shown of the death mask of Oliver Cromwell. It is incredibly detailed, showing wrinkles and facial hair and even a wart above his left eyebrow. The film starts with a plaster cast of a life mask of a youthful John Keats made by Benjamin Robert Hayden in 1916 followed by a death mask of Ellen Terry, made by Margaret Windsor in 1928. All the masks shown are held by the National Portrait Gallery. White Letters on Purple, National Portrait Gallery. My name is Nick Reynolds, I'm a sculptor and I specialise in making life masks and death masks. A life mask is a mask that's made by taking a mould directly from the subject's face while they're alive, whereas a death mask is when you mould someone's features when they're deceased. In order to make a life mask, you need a moulding compound. You can use plaster, if you like, um, or you can use alginate, which is a dental compound that dentists use to mould your teeth. Or, most recently, you can use a skin-safe silicon rubber. Um, So they're your three alternatives. The model's prepared in various different ways, depending on the method of casting. If you're going to use silicon rubber for a subject, you actually don't need any release agent um, because it has a moisturizer element in it. So hair, eyelashes, eyebrows and short hair will actually release from the mold. But with the silicon rubber, it comes in two parts generally, an A and a B, and you mix them up equal measure. And depending on the type, you have a limited amount of time ranging from three minutes to six minutes before it starts to go thick in the pot. But you can paint it on someone's face and it sets in about 20 minutes. And then once that is set, it's very rigid and firm, but still flexible. The main trick to capturing someone's features accurately uh, as A, to make sure that the person doesn't move uh, while while the stuff is setting and trying to get the stuff on as quick as possible and as thin as you can because the more material that you use, the more it's actually going to distort the face. Both alginate and silicon rubber, um, you only have a very thin amount on the face and when you take these off the face, they need a support to hold the shape of them. So plaster bandage is used to make a hard shell that the mould can sit in comfortably so that when you fill it, the weight of the material that you're pouring in won't distort the features in any way. Once uh, your plaster shell has hardened and the silicon or alginate underneath has set, you simply get the, the subject to move their features underneath and it's, it lets a bit of air get in there and it helps release it and you basically pull the shell off and the moulding compound in one go. You then have your negative of that person and you can pour a multitude of materials into that 
Once you have your mold, there's various materials you can use. You can just pour plaster into the mold and you can pour wax in it. Generally, um, I will pour wax into that mold and then I will spend some time sculpting the wax. Nick gently releases the silicon layer from the mold, peeling it off to reveal the plaster replica beneath. He and the model stand side by side, smiling. Nick holds up the finished life mask so model and mask can be compared. Light reflecting on the mask, now painted silver, highlights the fine lines of the face in incredible detail. One of my favourite masks at the National Portrait Gallery is the one of Oliver Cromwell. It was the very first death mask that I saw on a school trip to Warwick Castle, and uh, I was just blown away by the idea you can look at a dead person's features as if they've been frozen in time. And uh, I was deeply fascinated um, about this. White letters on purple invite us to explore the collection, npg.org.uk. Audio description written by Louise Fryer and voiced by Fern Lullum for Vocalize.